when it really comes down to it, Hammerfall will sound exactly the same whether uh, a million people liked it or ten people liked it. Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. My name is Belgian Jasper and if this is your first time on the channel, hit subscribe right now. Allow me to be an absolute fanboy right now. One of the bands that I grew up with in the late 90s that really sparked my passion for uh, classic heavy metal has got to be Hammerfall. And uh, the band is now back with their album number 12 already um, and I got to talk to Oscar Droniak of Hammerfall to learn all about it. Oscar, thank you so much for your time today. I, I really do appreciate it. Um, I, this is not just me as an, as an interviewer, but also as a fanboy, because I grew up with <laughs> Hammerfall in the 90s. Um, so I'm super excited that I get to talk to you today. Um, and so let's just go straight into it. We had an evil Hector with the minion and yeah. now an angelic Hector is coming yeah. down from the skies to fight the good fight again. This is album number 12 for you guys. Uh, mm -hmm. it, still super excited about these things or is this by now same yeah. old, same old? No, I mean, it's, it's I, I see what you're getting at, but it's as long as we feel the way we feel about the actual music that we put out, it's always going to be exciting. Yeah, so, yeah. And we feel really strongly about every every album that we put put out. It's never. I mean, there might be a time. Who knows in the future uh, that sure. we, yeah, that we just put out another album. But we, I feel we have a, a huge momentum right now. Uh, well, the pandemic did its its uh, part to to thrash that, but. Sure. At least we, you know, before the pandemic, we were we had a, a really good momentum going. Yeah, uh, and and that's the wave we were riding on to write the, most of the songs uh, yeah, yeah, here yeah. for this album. And I, I, I'm I'm super excited about it. I think it's the, uh, among the best albums we ever done. You're absolutely right. You know, it doesn't happen a lot these days anymore that an that a band with album number 12 is in, you know, one of the high points of the career. You're following a couple of strong albums with with uh, songs that became, you know, some of the biggest Hammerfall hits. Uh, you know, if you think about Sweet and Rock on Dominion, yeah. we think about Hammer High on Built the Last. Yeah, true. A, a lot of bands that have your lifespan, um, all the fans say like, oh, the first three albums, that's where I'm at. Okay. But with you guys, you've gone through these different cycles. Does that put, for when you were starting to work on this album, does that is that is that an extra motivation? Don't you care about what happened before, or is that just a lot of stress? Um, it's so the thing is you have to remember we began in a period when we barely thought anybody would notice this type of music anymore. Because yeah. it wasn't very popular. It was looked down upon and, and laughed at basically. Uh, so uh, when um, when you know when we start, when Doors of the Rave came out and everything started rolling, uh, we were already doing what we wanted. We hadn't made no compromises to get there. Yeah. We were just doing exactly what we wanted, and that's how we kept on on going for throughout the, the whole career. So I haven't. I mean, we always play a bunch of old stuff as well as a bunch of new stuff. We try to get the set list interesting both for the fans and for yeah. the band. Uh, you know, to to perform. Uh, and I think we managed to succeed. We always bring some fun stuff out of the closet, you know, one yeah. or two for, for, for each tour. Uh, and that's mostly for the diehard fans, but also for ourselves to, you know, to give us something more, uh, yeah, yeah, something yeah. fresh to, to play, you know, like Redemption on the last tour, for example. We had never sure. played that one live at all before. So that was really cool uh, for us to do. And it seems that people appreciate it a lot too. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, when it comes to the, the albums and everything, I mean, I, I feel as strongly about our music now as I did when we released right. Earth the Rave 25 years ago, which is unbelievable if you ask me. It's such a long time. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, it, it, it means everything to me, this this whole thing. And I, I, I don't know, it's, it's one of those things where the passion for heavy metal has never wavered. You know, yeah, I, yeah. I don't listen to music the same way I used to 25 years ago. Of course, I mean, who does? I don't think anybody does anything the same way they did it 25 years ago. But uh, I think I try to uh, enjoy music in the same way if I can. Yeah. Uh, and the the old stuff that I that I listened to and that I got into when I was a teenager, I always loved that stuff too. 
but in more to, to get to your point of, of your question, um, the thing is, I, I love it. The fact that we have that, that type of fan that appreciates the whole catalog of right. Hammerfall, because I'm of the opinion, and this might be, you know, some people might disagree, but this is my opinion. If you only like Metallica up until Master of Puppets or uh, and Justice for All, you don't like Metallica. You like exactly. that part of the band. You like <laughs> the trash parts. Uh, it's. I mean, I'm not comparing Hammerfall and Metallica here, but you see what I'm saying? Like the, the thing is, if you only like the first two or three Hammerfall albums, maybe you don't like Hammerfall that much. Maybe you only like what you liked when you were whatever age you were when you discovered those albums. And, and yeah. I think that's the big thing. So the most important thing for any listener, I try to heed to this. It's difficult, I know, because you always have preconceived notions about what it's going to be. But once I listen to an album, I always try to appreciate it for what it is, not yeah, for yeah. what I wanted it to be or hoped it to be or, or thought it would be. One of the things that I thought was hilarious was that um, on the new songs, um, there's so many fans that react in a very positive way and they start mm -hmm. infighting against each other. Hammerfall <laughs> is heavy metal. No, Hammerfall is power metal. No, it's heavy metal. No, it's power metal. <laughs> when you see that, yeah. I mean, it's great that everybody is reacting. Hey, this is, I love this song. Yes. Um, is, is that funny to you to see? Or like, like is, for you, I, Hammerfall has always said, we, we're a heavy metal band. Yeah. But exactly. do, do you make any distinctions in that? Or do you want to settle that once and for all for your fans? I, I see, I don't really, uh, read all the comments. I, I, you know, it, it would drive me crazy if I did. It, it, it would be too much, just because there are so many, in, yeah, yeah. Uh, so many opinions all the time. And we don't play music. I mean, I love the fact that people love our stuff, but when it really comes down to it, Hammerfall will sound exactly the same whether uh, a million people liked it or ten people liked it. But I do uh, have something to, to say in this uh, <laughs> in this um, topic here, uh, because we have never said that we were a power metal band. This, this type of music did not really exist when we uh, began. Power yeah. metal was, at least this is how it was for me when I grew up in, in, sure. uh, in Sweden. They, we had a term called US power metal, which was right. uh, Jag Panzer or Omen or you know, those yeah. sabotage maybe, those types of bands. Uh, and and the what the term that that uh, that became heavy uh, uh, sorry power metal towards the end of the 90s early 2000s was uh, a music style that I think is great but I never identified with it because right. we were always just a straight up heavy metal band we had some fast songs sure we helped boost that that um, that genre so to speak of power metal yeah. but I never we I don't think we were ever a part of it really yeah. uh, and that's that that's my opinion I mean. Heavy metal for me was also uh, is something sacred uh, for me. Yeah. It, it's something that when we when when we formed the band and recorded Grow the Brave, heavy metal was spat upon. It was not something to be proud of. And we said, "Fuck you! We are going to be proud of what we are yeah, because yeah. we are a heavy metal band." So we fought for that, for the right to be proud as a heavy metal band. And, I, and that's why I feel so passionate and strongly about this this uh, topic here. Yeah, 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 uh, yeah. It, it's uh, something that has. Uh, Go, you know, gone with me the whole career, basically. Yeah, yeah. So, who is the greatest heavy metal band of all time, and why is that Accept? <laughs> I was going to say uh, Accept or Judas Priest. I, I think, to be honest, I, I'm leaning towards Priest because they did it for 50 fucking years, you know, yeah. and they've never been bad. Uh, Accept is it's not that far behind. Uh, they have, have influenced me maybe more, or at least as much as those, those two are, are really uh, on the yeah. same level for me. Uh, except means more in certain areas, but in other areas it's priest. So right. I remember when I was trying to, like when I really began to play guitar, the first thing I ever learned was uh, um, Can't Stand the Night, the intro little melody on the guitar there but by Accept. But uh, I also played a lot of Judas Priest. And mm -hmm. I was on, on vacation with my family, with my mom and my brother, uh, and of course didn't have a guitar with me. I just had learned, you know, I got, just got that guitar bug. I had just started yeah, playing. Yeah. So I uh, rolled up one of those, um, uh, like a, the beach mats that you have. So it was like a, 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 a pretend neck of a guitar. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I found, this is really weird. I, we were in the south, uh, like on, on the Riviera of France. We found, I found a, 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 um, a tablature book by okay. from Judas Priest. It was from all the 70s stuff, like the from Rockerola to, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, 
Um, I believe it's at least Sad Wings of Destiny and okay. Sin of the Sin. I think maybe even for, but whatever. And so I knew I read the tablature. I imagined I was playing the guitar, uh, but it was just a rolled up piece of beach mat. And I, I you know, moved my hands and inter I heard, heard the songs in my head, of course, or maybe I was listening to my uh, my Walkman. I don't know, but yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. but that's that's how. So so I, I don't know. Judas Priest means so much to me wow. so it's really difficult to say uh which yeah, one yeah. is is tough okay the very you. tough band yeah. thank you thank you for sharing that memory that's really awesome let's dive into to, to the singles that have been released venerate mm -hmm. me a uh, really cool song where you are also supported by king diamond and um a question i wanted to ask you is because i felt like throughout the song there's there's some melodies, like subtle melody, melody changes that also just feel like a King Diamond song. Was that, mm. was, what, what, was he added to a song or did you have him in mind when you were writing that song? Because it feels very natural fit. Yeah, no, it, it was never, we, it, this was just a, a fun cameo thing we came up with during the recording. So there, okay. uh, the thing, so here it is. I, I, when I wrote that part of the song, I felt myself, that this probably is what Merciful Fate or King Diamond would have done with this part of if they had this song yeah, to yeah, work yeah, with. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I thought, yeah, that's pretty cool. So then when we recorded the guitars, I mentioned this to Pontus, uh, how cool it would, it would have been if King Diamond sang this. Ah, yeah, like that's never going to happen, you know? <laughs> um, but uh, Pontus is a sound engineer for King Diamond. He's worked with him for years on gotcha. tours. Uh, so he knows him, of course. And he said, uh, yeah, if I call him and ask him, I'm sure he'll say yes. I was like, what the fuck? Is there a, are you serious? Is there a chance? And Diamond why didn't you tell me this earlier? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. We could have done so much more. But in the end, I mean, for us, this is all about us being huge fans yeah. and having him, his voice on the Hammerfall album. That's like a bucket list thing, you know? That's yeah. I, I get goosebumps just thinking of the fact that I have King Diamond on, on, on Hammerfall album. Kind of feels like with uh, Hammer of Dawn, you you touch on all these different eras of of the band. Though, like I feel like it is a pretty um, well rounded overview of what Hammerfall is all about. Like this is I don't think back if you look back on this album in many years from it's gonna be like oh yeah that's the fast one or it's the or it's the mid tempo yeah. one. I feel like it's a very very varied and balanced album. Is that something that you were when you were working on it? Like does everything kind of come natural or were you do you go into an, a mindset with we want to try some different things on the album to give new listeners with all this momentum new fans want to give them a good overview of all the things that we can do for me i i if i sit down and think i'm going to write a song that sounds like this that's going to be a, a shit song most likely you know it's not going to be <laughs> yeah, good yeah, yeah. but when it comes to a full album uh i platinum i mean i have uh we, we're in the studio right now by the way in castle black studios where we re have recorded the last four or five albums uh and i i think it's uh it's i have tons of ideas and stuff and, and yeah. you know unfinished and some finished songs as well um but i when i put together an album i try to make sure it's not all uh, 10 songs that sound exactly the same or you know like or I, I liked it there for, for for there to be some variation in the album, so I, I um, select uh, uh, songs or, or ideas to work with based on that, and then mm -hmm. whatever comes out comes out. Maybe I am not in the mood for a fast song in that day, or, or maybe yeah, yeah. the other way around. Who knows? Uh, but but that's how. Yeah. So I, I do plan the albums a little bit to make sure that they they don't repeat it, repeat themselves too much, yeah, and, yeah. and that they are fun to listen to. You know that, that there's going to be a dynamic in it. You know. Between yourself and Joachim, who is the biggest Game of Thrones fans? Ah, that would be me. Yeah, uh, easy. I mean, he loves the show, but uh, I was a huge fan of everything before the show was even thought of. So, oh, yeah. uh, I, I started reading the books twenty years ago. How how many how many fans uh, after the show started and became the worldwide phenomenon that it was came to you and go like? Oh, now I get certain album titles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that has happened. That has happened, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, the person who introduced me to these books, or the book series, uh, yeah. back then there was three. I think the first three was out. Uh, it was Andy Darius from Halloween. 
All right. uh, we were uh, recording Crimson Thunder. We did that uh, partly in his studio on Tenerife. And yes, I remember. I, I, yeah. So I went down there. I don't know if I, I had a book and, and finished it or if I forgot to bring it. But I said, I don't have anything left to read. And he asked me, what, what kind of stuff do you like? And I told him, you know, this and this is usually what I read. And, and then he said, I got the perfect book for you. Uh, he went out and got me uh, Game of Thrones, the first yeah. uh, the first book in the Song of Ice and Fire series. I read 20 pages and I was hooked for life. That's how easy it was. And then that, that was uh, the those are the one among the absolute best books I've ever read. You're gonna be going on an epic tour uh, with Halloween. Um, uh, two bands that have a lot of legacy, that have a lot of successes in the past, but are both right now at a at a high in their career and that are absolutely looking ahead. Um, what what should the fans know? What should the fans expect of all the plans that you have coming up? Whenever this tour happens, uh, it's gonna be unbelievable. I mean, there are so many levels to this. As a fan, yes, of course, Halloween. Yeah. Fuck, they influenced us. They was, it, I mean, listening to them since for long before I met them. Uh, and now also we have met them. We know some of them fairly well. I mean, Andy, is, is, I, I would consider him a friend. That's the same with Kai because we have, you know, we re recorded with him yeah, before. Yeah. That was a long time ago. We still kept in touch all the time. And we did the tour together as with Gamma Ray um, in 25 years ago. So that that's, uh, you know, and the other guys, we met them many times. And we said, hi, they know who we are. I know who they are, yeah, they yeah, are yeah. of course. So, so, so there's like, um, uh, a, a, a different vibe with that uh, from a normal tour, right. for, at least from my point of view. Uh, plus, you have, like you said, two bands that have strong albums out. You know, Halloween is, is uh, I mean, since they reunited, they're even bigger. Yeah. Uh, and then they, they reunited with Kai and uh, Kiske. But uh, it's, it's going to be an amazing feeling. And imagine, you know, if... <laughs> I, it, this is what I think about almost daily nowadays. The the moment everybody's going like when the intro goes and we go out on stage, I can't imagine that, that explosion. It's going to be it's huge. Yeah. It's the, the burst of energy is just going to explode everything. And then I I talked about another uh, this with another interviewer a couple of days ago, uh, and and he said I'm sure the fans feel the same way. And I said, yeah yeah they are of course they are. I haven't thought yeah. about it from their side, but of course they haven't seen any shows either. So. Yeah they're going to be as ecstatic and and and, uh, and ready to blow as we are so oh, imagine th those shows is going to be unbelievable and to make the circle beautifully round one other person that is part of halloween that uh, has that hammerfall connection is sasha gessner the uh, "Quote unquote newer guitar yep. player for now twenty years. Yeah, Rizzi, uh, been with them for who, years. Who was part of Freedom Call when they were exactly. opening up for you guys when you were touring Renegade? That yep. first album that I ever bought of Hammerfall and my first Hammerfall show in Antwerp, all those years ago. Uh, um, but uh, no, Oscar, well. uh, I I could ask you a million more questions because I'm more a fanboy than anything right now. Uh, but I do appreciate your time. I know that it's extremely busy weeks for you and uh, super excited uh, to see the new album come out. And uh, yeah, I can't wait to catch uh, you guys in Halloween uh, on the road, whenever or wherever that happens. Yeah. Let's hope that it happens soon. Oscar, I want to thank you so much for your time today. I really had a lot of fun talking to you. And I, I hope that uh, uh, this whole crazy cycle of promotion isn't too bad for you right now. It really isn't. It's a lot of fun about talk, talking about something you love. And I gotta say, this was a really cool interview. So, you, yeah, I, I really had a good time too. So, awesome. thank you for this and cheers. Cheers. <laughs>